sorry about that. My name is Jocelyn Hurtado. I am a second year materials engineering student at Cal Poly SLO and today I will be talking about a biopolymer made from cactus juice. Um, to get started though, I'd like to talk about what is materials engineering as well as what is a biopolymer just to give you a little bit more of background. Then we will talk about the roles materials and materials engineers have in society as well as who invented this biopolymer, how it came to be, and then we will talk about the impact it can make in our lives if we were to use it. And finally, I will be applying the engineering code of ethics to a real world scenario using this biopolymer. So without further ado, let's go. So what is materials engineering? What materials engineers do is that they study the processing, the structure, and the properties of a material so that they can alter it and optimize its performance in any given application. So what is a polymer? A polymer is a material made of long repeating chains of molecules and a biopolymer is a polymer found in living organisms. A perfect example of a biopolymer would be DNA. So now let's move on. Let's discuss the roles materials have in society. So as we all know, materials are used for literally everything and anything. They are everywhere. There are so many different types of materials ranging from polymers, ceramics, metals, and semiconductors. Next, let's talk about the role materials engineers have in society. So materials engineers are highly important. Um, I'd like to think that materials engineers are actually the foundation of all engineers because without us, you wouldn't know what material to use for any given application. When building a house, you have to think about the environment this house will be in. For example, is there a lot of earthquakes in this place? If so, what material would you use to make it not fall down? That's where materials engineers go in and save the day. Okay, so now let's start talking about the biopolymer made out of cactus juice. So I got introduced to this biopolymer, really, it was crazy. Um, so the department chair, Trevor Harding, he sent out an email to all the mates saying if anybody can translate these emails. And I, I remember I was in my IME class and I was like, oh yeah, like I'll do it. And while I was looking at the emails, I saw that there was this engineer from Guadalajara that was going to come to Cal Poly to research her um, cactus juice for her biopolymer. And I was so excited. And I actually got to meet her, talk to her a little bit, and also even translated her presentation at Cal Poly, which was awesome. So this engineer's name is Sandra Pascual Ortiz. She works at Univa. It's a Catholic university in Guadalajara. So it all started seven years ago as a senior project in Univa, um, but then the students actually left that idea and did another senior project. But Sandra Pascual actually picked it up and started researching. Um, if you didn't know, there's nearly 2,000 cactus species in the world. Um, so I remember the last time I talked to her, it, she was around 300 and 350-ish species um, that she had already researched. She's still looking to see which um, cactus juice makes the best biopolymer. For whatever application you'd want so here i just want to show you a little bit of pictures of her and her bioplastic and also me with her in cal poly here sandra pascortis is shown with her bioplastic and here is me when i met her at cal poly next let's talk about the impact this biopolymer can make if we were to use it in our lives let's talk about plastic bags if we were to make a plastic bag out of this biopolymer, it could degrade in a month. Whereas a regular plastic bag, it takes from 10 to 100 years to break down if exposed to the sunlight. And while it's breaking down, it leaves microplastics behind as well as releasing greenhouse gases. Now using the impact paradigm, 
Um, this biopolymer is made from cactus juice, if you recall. Um, and there is nearly 2,000 cactus species. Obviously, she's still in the process of finding which one is the best. But knowing that there's so many species, we could probably find ways of using different species of cacti to make certain things. For example, maybe we use a specific type of cactus for plastic bags or a specific type of cactus for uh, wrappers of some sort. Let's take a little break, you know, eat a little, and let's get back to it. Lastly, we're going to apply this biopolymer into a real world scenario and seeing how it applies to the engineering code of ethics. For my real world scenario, I will be using plastic bags. As many of you know, a lot of cities actually made it mandatory for you to bring your reusable bag years ago. Um, they were not giving out plastic bags um, because of the problems it was causing in the environment. So that is why I'm going to use plastic bags because I, I believe that this biopolymer could be very suitable for plastic bags in reducing our plastic use. As stated in the Engineering Code of Ethics, engineers shall hold paramount the public's safety, welfare, and health. And Sandra is doing this with her biopolymer. It degrades in one month, like I said before, so it doesn't harm the environment as much as a plastic bag would which sometimes they don't even degrade at all. Another thing that is stated in the Engineering Code of Ethics is that engineers shall at all times strive to serve the public interest. Um, you know, recently we've had a lot of environmental issues and some, some of the problems are because of plastic bags and how they don't degrade. Sandra has been keeping this in mind because, like I said before, she's been researching cactus juice that works better. So, for example, the one right now that she has, it biodegrades in one month. But what if we find a cactus juice that actually biodegrades in a week? I am done. I hope you learned something new and you enjoyed the video. Thank you.